Hey, good morning to everybody. Happy Saturday. It's Daryl here. It's bright and early, 5 a.m. here in Connecticut on the East Coast. I'm going to try to push through this video. For the people that usually watch my, my channel, you realize I haven't made a video since Wednesday, I believe. And I have been under the weather. Let me say this first. Um, whenever something big happens in my personal life, the first thing, because I've managed to make videos every single day, at least one video every single day for over two years now, two, almost three years, I've probably got almost 1,800 videos here on, on YouTube on this channel. Um, my first instinct is to, to not mention my personal life on the air and to try to find a usual a political, social uh, com, you know, subject to talk about for the day, a story to talk about for the day. And I realized this. Uh, I stopped doing this because there are a couple of reasons. It's almost impossible to do. Go back to when I had the uh, home housing crisis, when I, was, uh, I lived in that beautiful place uh, about three, four months ago. And uh, I'd been there for six, over six years. And I was notified they wanted me out of there in like 21 days. You know, and there was a, short, there was a complete shortage of apartments everywhere. I had nowhere to live. And it's impossible to make it, to try to, to not let that show through. When I, I, you know, I tried a couple times to not talk about it and make it my usual video about politics or whatever, and it just doesn't work. You know, I make, I make a shoddy video about politics, and I, I found this too, that a lot of you all are going through a lot of personal issues yourself. I think in my heart, I was trying to stay away from just like a blog where I just sit here and babble about my life. Um, you know, and I, I guess I wanted to try to keep it more professional, you know, but this is what I discovered that, uh, after this year or two, a lot of you seem to identify with me. Um, and of course, a lot of you all are going through personal stuff in your lives. And I, I found when I made that home, my, my home crisis videos, the views went up. You know, uh, like I said, because I, I, I couldn't concentrate on my usual subject matter. And those views, the views on those went down. And when I just broke down and talked about what was going on in my life, people related to it. Okay, enough about that. What's going on right now? All right, Wednesday, I'll just start from the beginning. Wednesday evening, I'm watching a movie in the living room. There were peanuts on sale at my local my local store. Very cheap, big bag of peanuts, lightly lightly sea salt, salt uh, lightly salted with sea salt. And now, for the last five or ten years, peanuts have been giving me. I, I used to love peanuts, and cashews, and all that. But lately, I've been having a hard time digesting them. It's not like a real peanut allergy, but my stomach just doesn't seem to to like them anymore. I can't digest them, and I ignored this. And I'm watching a movie Wednesday evening, and it's a big... I haven't pulled... The bag is right in the cupboard right now, and I, I was going to show you guys, but I'm afraid I'll, I'll toss my cookies if I even look at it. Okay, so I'm watching the movie, and I ate way more than any intelligent person should have. You know, and I was eating them, and there was no reaction. They went down great. You know, I went to bed that night. <clears throat> I woke up uh, about... 3 or 4 a.m., no, not even, probably about 1 a.m., Thursday morning, just doubled over in excruciating pain and nausea. Uh, long story short, I have not been able to keep any food down for, I'm going on three days now. I think I've lost about seven pounds. I couldn't even keep water down. Uh, I know, I don't want to give you guys too much information. There's a lot of things that went through my head. Let me try to describe to you guys, too. Uh, every piece of those peanuts that were now in my stomach, it felt like a thumbtack. That's, that's the only way I could describe it. That that bowl of peanuts I ate, it's like they just turned into thumbtacks in my uh, in my stomach. And I couldn't even I couldn't even keep down water. Now here's here's another interesting thing. The way you know when, when things go bad, they go really bad. If by Thursday night uh, I'm getting really concerned. I'm dehydrating. I, I can barely stand up. Um, you know, I, I don't have any, any energy and it's just getting worse. And I, 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 at that point, I would have usually gone to the hospital. But just like, you know, Murphy's Law, Friday morning, I had an extremely important meeting for my painting, for my artwork with a big proposed buyer. And I just did not want to let on. I did not want to miss this, this meeting. And it was at 7.30 in the morning. This has never happened before. I've never had a meeting that early. 
uh, you know, and of course, I, I haven't gotten sick in years, and bam, just, you know, coincides. So, like a stubborn person, I did not go to the hospital Thursday night, and uh, I'm starting to come out of it. Uh, protein shakes have helped. They've gotten back my energy, and I may, I'm starting to be able to keep down liquids at least. I know, I don't want to get too descriptive. Uh, here's a few things I want to go through. Um, you know, I know pain. You know, I've broken bones, like I told you guys. I've had two, uh, I, I've actually had a ruptured disc that moved up in my, my spinal column that had to be taken out. Uh, two back surgeries, which the pain is just excruciating. My teeth all pulled out, broken bones, broken nose. I know pain, and man, this pain was just, like I said, it felt like thumbtacks in my stomach. It was just, it, it gets to the point, I, I know a lot of you can probably relate to this. It gets to the point where you can't even think anymore. Your mind, you, your your cognitive reasoning just goes out the window. Seriously, you can't keep a thought in your head. I don't know if any of you if you've ever had this happen. I turn on the TV because I think it'll distract me, and everything that comes on there just makes me feel sicker, you know, or more nauseous. And I can't even register what's on the TV. It just it's like it's nonsense, and it just keeps repeating in my head. I, I don't know if any of you can relate to that, but it gets the pain gets so bad to the point where you can't think clearly. And of course, not eating and drinking for, for a bit. At that point, 36 hours, uh, I was starting to lose touch with reality. Um, let me just say a few things that I thought of. You know, like I said, I'm coming back today. I still haven't eaten solid food yet. But um, I thought a lot of you guys came from Bo the Fifth Column. A lot of you guys came found me through him. And I, I look at, it went through my mind when I couldn't make a video the last two days. Because Bo, up to my knowledge, Bo has ne almost never missed a day. I've been watching him for over two years. And it occurred to me that maybe he pre-records some. I don't think so, because his, his topics are all very current. And, and I, I, I'm amazed. I'm amazed. And my hat's off to, to, to people like that. It's, it's hard. You know, it's hard enough to get through a 40-hour a week you know, a uh, nine to five job, five, five days a week. But, uh, I'm not saying making videos, is, it's just, you have to, if you, if you know, you do it, something I do every day at 2.30 AM in the morning. And, uh, I have been able to do that up until, till Wednesday, despite trying as much as I could. So, you know, like I said, my hat's off to, uh, to people like Bo the fifth column that, uh, have had the luck or the, the uh, wherewithal to, to get through whatever was going on in their personal lives and, and still continue to, to reach out to their viewers. That's my hat's off to you because I, I couldn't do it. All right. Another thing that went through my head. Um, we all for, we, I think we forget how lucky we are. Uh, you know, it reminded me that there's millions of people across this country, and across the world that have to live with this kind of pain and illness every single day of their lives. Seriously. And I think we forget how, how truly blessed every day really is until you're laid up and you can't, you cannot stand up. And, you know, no matter how much mental push you have, you can't do it. And then the pain, the pain, just a, a pain that won't go away, that makes you want to, to end it. That's how bad the pain gets. And you realize you know, how truly blessed, seriously, it sounds corny, but truly blessed. I mean, it really, when you have, you know, great, you know, when you just have a day after day and you think it's boring or whatever, but you don't realize how blessed you are just to have those boring days, you know, really, because living in this kind of, living in that kind of condition is, uh, it, it makes a boring, tedious day like a Christmas at Disneyland with the Playboy, Playboy Playmate models uh, on my birthday, on the 4th of July. <laughs> anyway, another thing I thought about was the person I just lost recently, Audrey. Um, it made me think what she went through. She was a healthy, vivacious, you know, we, we went to the gym every morning at 5 a.m. And she, be, she would beat me on the treadmill. And we met, she was going down to Jacksonville at the uh, end of June. Within a week of getting there, she, re she, she, had, she had a thing against getting the vaccine. Within a week of getting there, she got sick. Uh, she was in intensive care about a week later. And I lost her on August 5th. And uh, 
it just you know just just the tiny it seems it seems terrible to me to even compare just the 48 hours of pain and, and misery I went through to what she must have gone through you know and I think about that you know it, it, and chances are if she had just gotten vaccinated you know um, I got the reports you know from her family about MRSA. I didn't know that there was a high chance of people staying in intensive care for this long, plus the, being the tape, the surgical tape on their face. And there's a high probability of getting MRSA, those, uh, back, those uh, penicillin resistant uh, infections and uh, collapsed lungs and all that. And I, I, you know, and then not having her family being able to visit her, and I'm just. It makes me want to cry right now, thinking of the, the, the pure torture that she endured for, for those five weeks. Um, one last thing I want to talk about. I, I saw a uh, person that's against the vaccines, Trump supporter. It was at a rally not too long ago. I've been trying to find the link to it, but I couldn't find it. Uh, it, it the title of it was something along the lines of anti-vaxxer flips right in the middle of a sentence or something. Because they're interviewing him. And he, he says, I guarantee people that took these vaccines. And then he goes on to forecast that something not good will happen to them in the next 10 or 15 years. i got to watch what I say here. Because that's, that's total bull to me. Uh, that is not true. Uh, but, hey, well, we don't know. But I'm doing fine. I'm ready for my booster shot anytime. Now, I, I'm, I can get my booster shot any day. And I would have probably if it wasn't for... I just qualified about four days ago. And I probably would have gotten it if not for being sick. But anyway, and then in the same sentence, this guy flips and starts talking up Operation Warp Speed and how Donald Trump came up with these wonderful vaccines. You know, in the same sentence, in the same sentence, you went from this, this forecast of what could happen to, to vaccinate people to praising his... Uh, his leader, Donald Trump, for these amazing vaccines and warp speed. It's seriously, same sentence. Uh, cognitive dissonance, is that what, I, I, I don't I don't even know what to call that. Anyway, just some things that ran through my head. Uh, I'll be back later. I'm feeling better all the time. I'll be back later with a regular video. You guys have a great Saturday.